silence, therefore, is like a womb from which the bliss arises. It's not supposed to begin and end in itself. Otherwise, there's just a sense of having ended everything. There's nothing affirmative about that. In other words, that might end suffering, but it does not have any further impact beyond that. The question then becomes, what about the rest of the human apparatus? Where does that fit into silence and living beyond suffering, living with clarity? Clarity here defined as just abiding with yourself in innocence. The body and the mind cannot always remain in a kind of inert silence. And there should be no urge to maintain that in a deliberate way because it's going to entertain conflict, conflict between your natural ability to want to move and express yourself in relativity in that silence which is beyond relativity. At first, it's going to be required that you discern the distinction between those two, between the silence and the movement of life, the changing realm. So a discernment must be made in consciousness between the unchanging now it changes. There must be a real sense of discrimination between each, between those two. The unique nature of each needs to be made clear to the mind. Then, when that movement is mastered, so to speak, the possibility for bliss to stop permeating from the root of attention into the entire body-mind complex. That's a different kind of movement. So you could say that the first aspect is the dark absolute and the second aspect is the radiant absolute. The radiant absolute will carry the bliss into the mind, which is a kind of luminosity. And that light will penetrate the mind and make it very happy for no reason. <laughs>